the betrayal of Albion, the Dutch puppeteers. The Netherlands, Holland, or the Low Countries have played a significant role throughout this series. As far as the Jewish presence there goes, we get the same story whereby the probably arrived with the Romans, although they probably didn't. Documentary evidence is only available from the 1100s, which shows the usual persecution and various regular expulsions. They were blamed for the Black Death that occurred between 1347 and 1351, just as they were in England. There were also identical accusations of blood, libel, and host desecration as in England, which is odd when you consider that there was no internet, TV, telephones, radio, or even a postal service. International communication took weeks, if not months, and was totally out of the question for the type of uncouth, ignorant peasant we are supposed to believe did all the persecuting. Many of the Jews expelled from England went to the Low Countries. From the 15th century, Jews also resided in the northern Netherlands. Their most important occupation was money lending, making them dependent on the economies of the cities. Shouldn't that be the other way around? In this way, Naim again became an important financial marketplace where a great many of Jewish families came to settle. Nonetheless, Jews continued to choose the large cities in the southern Netherlands as for their home base. In the 16th century, the city of Antwerp came to be a very important location for Jewish tradesmen and moneylanders because of its flourishing economy. This also turned into a refugee for a number of Marons who had been expelled from Spain and Portugal by the Inquisition after 1492. Jewish bankers usually settled there using a Christian pseudonym, Francisco Mendes, born into a distinguished family of bankers, opened a branch in Antwerp that was one of the largest banks in Europe. The flourishing Jewish trade in Antwerp ended, however, when the Netherlands were divided during the reign of King Philip II of Spain, and by the end of the century many Jews took refuge in the northern Netherlands, especially in Amsterdam, where they formed a community. It's interesting that the Jews are always described as taking refuge rather than settling or invading somewhere. Amsterdam, however, did not recognize religions other than Protestantism. The community was discovered and its leaders arrested in 1603. As a result, some of the newly acknowledged Jews moved to the towns of Alkmaar, Rotterdam, and Harlem, which extended them protective charters. The majority, however, remained in Amsterdam and even founded a second community there in 1608. That all sounds very odd. We have here the Portuguese synagogue in Amsterdam. In fact, the particular flavor of Protestantism in Amsterdam and all of the Netherlands was Calvinism. Contrary to general belief, Calvinism is of Jewish origin. It was deliberately conceived to split the adherents of the Christian religions and divide the people. Calvin's real name was Cohen. When he went from Geneva to France to start preaching his doctrine, he became known as Calvin. Then in England it became Calvin. History proves that there is hardly a revolutionary plot that wasn't hatched in Switzerland. There is hardly a Jewish revolutionary leader who hasn't changed his name. At the B.N.A. birth celebrations held in Paris, France in 1936, Cohen, Calvin, or Calvin, whatever his name may have been, was enthusiastically acclaimed to have been of Jewish descent. This fact was co commented upon in the Catholic Gazette in February of that year.
Uh, in 1648, the Dutch principalities, led by William I of Orange, rebelled against Spanish rule and formed the United Provinces of the Netherlands. This is when the Low Countries split in two. The Netherlands and the North separated from the southern provinces, present-day Belgium and Luxembourg, which continued under Habsburg Spanish rule until 1714. Previously, the Habsburgs had appointed a stead holder, or kind of sheriff or lord lieutenant, to govern the Low Countries in their stead. Through William I's victory over the Spanish, the role of stead holder became hereditary to the House of Orange, especially the ones called Bill. After the split from Spain, the role continued as that of the head of state, on and off. William I of Orange was assassinated in 1580, because even after the split from Spain and thus freedom from its religious persecution of the Protestant Calvinists, there just had to be some kind of issue to divide the people and serve the hidden agenda, republicanism. William II, Prince of Orange, married Mary Stuart, daughter of Charles I, King of England, in 1642. Their son was born in 1650. 1 plus 5 equals 6, 66 again, one week after his father died. Let's call this one Bill the Orange. There was a great deal of controversy over Bill the Orange's upbringing. In spite of his mother and his uncles being Catholics, Bill was indoctrinated into Calvinism. The young Bill's education became a tussle between English royalty and the states of Holland until in 1666, when William was 16, the states officially made him a ward of the government or a child of state. All pro-English coursers, including Zylenstein, Bill's half-brother, were removed from William's company. William begged De Witt to allow Zylenstein to stay, but he refused. De Witt the leading politician of the Republic took William's education into his own hands, instructing him weekly in state matters and joining him for regular games of real tennis. Bill the Orange was being groomed by a Republican, Johann de Witt, who opposed the House of Orange Nassau and the Orangists. He was also strongly liberal, preferring lesser power to the central government and more power to the regentine regents and he had big plans for bill since the 1500s dutch cities had been run by these regenten rich merchant families who had gradually formed a closed elite and created an oligarchy that ruled the dutch republic and whose members were the leaders of the dutch cities after the death of william's father most provinces had left the office of state holder vacant by demand of Oliver Cromwell, the Treaty of Westminster in 1654, which ended the First Anglo-Dutch War, had a secret annex that required the act of seclusion, which forbade the province of Holland from appointing a member of the House of Orange as stadtholder. Wikipedia sources, of course. By means of this act of seclusion, the Jewish Messiah, Cromwell, prevented the regents from appointing Bill the Orange as their stadtholder puppet because he was already spoken for in the puppet department. While in general European Jews isolated themselves economically and socially as well as polit politically, the Jews of the Netherlands enjoyed as early as the 17th century economic and social integration that the rest of European Jewry would not known for hundreds of years. Professions like medicine became very popular, and Jewish physicians were free to practice even among non-Jews. More importantly, the Jews, particularly the Sephardim, played a large role in the economic expansion that elevated the Netherlands to a world center in the um, 1600s. The Portuguese Jews, with their knowledge of languages and connections to the international trade network of Jews and Marans, became important in the shipping and trading industries. Several Jews were important shareholders in the Dutch East Indies Company. 
which dominated international trade during the 17th and 18th centuries. Jews became a prominent in other businesses as well, succeeding in the tobacco, sugar refining and printing industries. Most of all, the diamond industry soon became an almost exclusively Jewish occupation due to their success in it. In 1672, the Dutch Republic was simultaneously attacked by England, Anglican Protestant, France Catholic, the Prince Bishop Bernard von Gallen, Jesuit educated Catholic, Bishop of Munster, the Prince Bishop Maximilian Henry of Bavaria, devious Catholic, Archbishop of Cologne. Following this onslaught, Bill the Orange was swept to power to become King of the Netherlands. The Orangists took over the Dutch government. Johan de Witt and his brother got the blame for the defeat and were lynched. Here we have a coalition between Catholics and Protestants which achieved nothing more than placing Bill the Orange on the throne of the Netherlands and delivering a slap to the wealthy regency of Holland. Exactly what was the common interest? Eventually, by 1674, England and Holland were at peace. Well, Bill the Orange was on a roll, because no sooner had he met Princess Mary of England, the eldest daughter of the English Duke of York, than they married in 1677, and he found himself right near the top of the quay for the throne of England, Scotland, and Ireland. All that stood in his way was his uncle, the Duke of York. James II and King Charles II himself. After a failed assassination attempt in 1683 and King Charles II's death in 1685, the Duke of York became King James II of England, seven of Scotland and Ireland. Immediately a campaign of l'infamy was started against him. In that same year there was an insurrection which also failed and resulted in over 300 people being sentenced to death in circumstances of atrocious cruelty. Nearly 1,000 others were condemned to be sold as slaves. England was in a state of perplexity. The Declaration of Indulgence or Declaration for Liberty or Conscience was a pair of proclamations made by James II of England and Seven of Scotland in 1687. The indulgence was first issued for Scotland on 12 February and then for England on 4 April 1687. It was a first step at establishing freedom of religion in the British Isles. The declaration granted broad religious freedom in England by suspending penal laws and forcing confer conformity to the Church of England and allowing persons to worship in their homes or chapels as they saw fit and it ended the requirement of affirming religious oaths before gaining employment in government office. By use of the royal suspending power, the king lifted the religious penal laws and granted toleration to the various Christian denominations, Catholic and Protestant, within his kingdoms. Some Anglicans objected to the fact that the declaration had no specified limits and thus at least in theory, licensed the practice of any religion, including Islam, Judaism, or Paganism. The English Roman Catholics provided a foundation far too narrow for the throne to rest upon with safety. James and his Jesuit advisors, for it must be remembered that he, like Louis, had allied himself not with the Pope but with the Jesuits, resolved to seek the alliance of the Protestant disinterest. No more religious schemes or persecution. Stay tuned.